Hi guys and welcome to another tutorial. So today's tutorial is going to be for all levels of painting. If you have fun creating with this tutorial and you upload it onto Instagram, make sure you tag me in because I absolutely love looking through all your creations. So today we're going to be covering techniques like blending, layers and glazing. And you can find the reference photo and a list of materials that I've used in the description box. Okay, so let's begin. So we're going to start with the first layer. So taking a bit of yellow and a bit of white, I'm going to add this into the background first, as this is going to be like the sunset glowing in the background. I'm going to add a little bit of the magenta to just warm that up a little bit. And you get this really beautiful, like creamy pastel colour. So I'm just going to start pasting that in. You don't need to be too careful at this stage as we're going to be doing lots of layers and blending. So I'm going to be using a fair bit of paint so that it spreads easily on the canvas. And I do also have a pot of water just at the side of me that I can keep my brush nice and damp with. So because it's going to be a reflection with water, we want to have it in the sky and then a reflection as well. So now I'm just going to add some pinky hues into that and sort of blend that through a little bit. And I'm basically going to work from the inside out, adding darker and darker, stronger colours. So every time I go back to my magenta, I just add a little bit more magenta and a little bit less white. And we're going to be moving from the inside right to the outside of the canvas. I like to work quite fast because it means the paint then stays very wet but if you want to just slow this video down a little bit that's absolutely fine and you can keep just adding little bits of water onto your brush to keep that paint fluid and keep it wet so that it blends more easily. Okay, for the next stage I want to make it a little bit purpley, so we're going to be going in with the magenta and adding a little bit of blue as well. And I'm going to bring that in from the side, it's going to be quite a strong colour. We don't need to worry about the middle horizon too much because we're going to be putting that over the top of when these layers are done, so we don't need to be too careful about the centre of the painting. I'm just going to take that up and around the sunset. And I really want to encourage you guys to follow along with this tutorial, but also make it your own. You know, don't panic that you're not maybe doing exactly the same brush strokes as me or exactly the same colours because this is just a guide, I want this just to really fuel your own creativity and give you a bit of confidence to try something and a little bit of coaching. I don't want this to be, you know, copy exactly what I do because at the end of the day, that's going to be really difficult to create something exactly the same. So feel free to experiment with different colours and to just have fun with it. So for the corners I'm going in quite dark, I'm adding Payne's Grey with a bit of blue and I want that to be on like the corner so it really draws your eye in. And 
And I'm just going to blend out some of these lines now because I feel like some of the lines are quite harsh. So using big old brush strokes, I'm just going to blend that through. And when you're blending, this is a good time to fill in any little areas that haven't been covered in paint yet. So now I'm taking a bit of a smaller brush. So I've waited for the first layer to dry and now I'm going in with some yellow. And I'm taking that in quite vibrant over what we've already done because this is going to be like the sun bursting through those clouds. And then of course we need to put it on the reflection as well so that it mimics the sky. So now I'm going to make a mixture very similar to the first colour that we made which was sort of like a pinky yellow um, that's quite light and I'm just going to use this to block in again some of the, the colour that we lost with the, the more darker colours and sort of to use that to blend into as well. I love these colours together, I feel like this pink and yellow together just reminds me of like fruit salad sweets. I don't know if you guys remember those or have those now but it just remem it just reminds me of like the old style pick a mix that you used to get at the corner shop. And I think this is where painting can be really therapeutic when you don't feel like it has to look a certain way and you can be very loose with the colours and it can be very intuitive as well. So taking some very deep magenta now, I want to start building on top of what we've done. So I'm, so I'm building up like clouds that are now in the foreground. So I'm going to use a little bit of water just to blend that through a little bit more but I'm just going to go over what we've already done just going around the sunset like before and building up those clouds Sunsets can be so fun to paint because you really get to go vibrant with the colours. You don't necessarily need a lot of drawing skills for it. And also it's just great fun to choose really vivid colours that all go together really nicely. I remember sunset paintings always being one of the first styles that I could be proud of because they were a lot simpler than other things to capture. So it's a really good place to start if you guys want to build up your confidence with painting. I do also have quite a few different sunset tutorials so if you've not seen them all then I will link to them now and you can go and check those out after this video.
Here I'm using sort of a scumbling method, which is where you don't have a lot of paint on the brush. You move it from side to side and basically it adds almost like a transparent layer and basically it just picks up the tooth of the canvas. I feel like these two colours up here need blending a bit more so I'm going to be using pink and blue and just blending that transition from the pink to the blue in the sky and creating that dark rich purple that's really going to draw your eye in and give that amazing contrast with the yellow. And to make sure that's blended, I'm going to take that right down as well. I'm not just going to focus on the bit we're painting. I'm going to drag that right down into the center of the painting. And you can really start to see the layers building up on top of one another and how we're starting to get those really vivid colors. So using our mixture again of Payne's Grey and Blue, I'm going to further darken those corners. Sometimes the darker colours need a few layers to really bring the depth in, as it can sometimes be quite translucent, especially if you're adding a fair bit of water to it as well. So don't be afraid to add layers on top of what you've already painted, because that will further just really enrich what you've already done. And using a bit of water, I'm just going to blend that through into the pink in the bottom part of the painting. And I'm using quite a lot of water here just to give it a really thin coat. This is almost like a glaze that we're putting on. A glaze is just a very thin coat of paint which can add like a tint or a hue. Okay, so now we're going to go in with the center horizon. So I'm going to first go in with some blue with a little bit of white and Payne's Grey just to grey that out a little bit and these are going to be the background mountains and you can either bring your own completely made up landscape or you can use a reference photo below to give you a little bit of guidance with that that's completely up to you but if you want to make up your own fantasy landscape go for it And now I'm going to go in with Payne's Grey to add in like a foreground layer and this is just going to overlap that a little bit. And I really love how dark the Payne's Grey looks because it's not as it's not as harsh as black, but it also really brings that deep contrast, especially when it's put against that really pale yellow. It just really, really pops. So we need to remember here as well, we do have the reflection in the water. We're going to try and make this like as mirrored as possible, um, but that is 
pretty difficult without spending a long, long time on something. So I'm just going to wing it a little bit and see what happens. So now I'm going to do the reflection of the background mountains. And sorry that skipped a little bit, my camera actually stopped recording which is really annoying and I didn't realise so I'm sorry for that little skip in time. At this point all hours will look slightly different so just keep working on your reflections and your horizon what yours looks like. So I'm going to add in a few little bits more of detail. I've just noticed that I want some more yellow in the reflection so I'm just going to add that now. But I think for mine, I'm really happy with that. So this is a great place if you're really happy with your painting and you don't feel very confident, there is an option to leave it here. It's completely up to you. Um, but if you're feeling good and you're ready to take on a new challenge, then let's carry on. So for the next layer, if you want to take it to the next bit of difficulty, we are going to be taking something round <laughs> that you can use to shape as a circle. If you're confident drawing circles, then go ahead. I'm definitely not confident at drawing circles, so I'm going to use a candle to just give myself just a little bit of help with that. And for the reflection, I don't want a full circle because it's going to be warped slightly, um, but we want sort of like an o more of an oval shape. So to start with for the moon, I'm going to be mixing this, this pale blue, which is a mixture of blue with a little bit of pink in and white. And for the first layer of the moon, I'm just going to colour that in completely. And to get a smooth line, you can make sure that your brush is quite damp, that way the paint will be more fluid. But you don't want watery paint, that's really important to remember. Okay, lovely, and once we've done that, we're going to go in and do the reflected moon as well. This one, I'm not going to go quite as intricate with the harsh lines. We want the lines to sort of be a little bit blurry because it's going to be reflected. So you can use the scumbling method here as well, where you sort of brush it over the layers. Okay, so for the second layer, so once that first layer of the moon is dry, I'm going to go in with some white mixed with the previous mixture that we had. <laughs> and sort of just chisel out almost like a moon, a moon-like shape. And here you can use a reference photo for sure because it definitely does help. Sometimes when we make things up, it's not always as random as we would like and it can look a little bit contrived so sometimes just using a reference photo can really help you get that randomness.
do the same and reflect similar shapes on the bottom. Okay, so next I'm going to go in with a bit of like a darker purple colour, which was just, again, a mixture of the blue and the pink. And now I'm just going to start building up some darker areas. So we've got, we started with a medium, we went in with the light, and now we're going to go in with the dark. And with things like moons and skies, it's so about the layers. Like, the more, more layers you add, the more detail you add, the more realistic it will look. So I'm keeping this... A very like minimal version for this tutorial so that it's not hours and hours long but really feel free to pause this video put on some music and spend time with the reference photo I'm all about keeping it short as well because to me this is a great practice rather than creating a masterpiece it's more about having fun with creating it so next I'm going to take a really tiny brush and with some pure white straight from the palette I'm going to start to add just some little details and little areas where it's really bright white. And you can sort of see it starting to look more realistic and starting to take shape. Now I've done the details in white, I'm also going to go in with some details with some purple. So this is more of a pinky purple, so there's more magenta than there is blue. And again, you can choose your own sort of difficulty at this level. You can either keep it very simple, very simplistic, or you can spend a long time adding more and more details. It's completely up to you. And now I'm just going to do the same with the reflected moon. So using the small paintbrush, I'm going to take some white straight from the palette and very carefully just dot some random stars across the sky. I'm going to try and vary the sizes, so some are going to be a little bit bigger and thicker and some are going to be so tiny you can almost barely see them and I'm hoping that a mixture of the two will create a realistic starry background. I always find this bit like one of the most fun parts of drawing a night sky. And you can also see that my paintbrush needs a little trim because one of the hairs have gone astray, which is not the most helpful thing. <laughs> And 
Okay, so now that's done, I'm going to show you guys a technique called glazing. So I've taken some of the magenta, which is a transparent acrylic. So it's really important to check on your tubes if it is transparent or opaque. But if it's transparent, you can add a bit of water and then use that over the top of other areas. So I'm using this over the top because I felt like the white just stood out far too much and didn't match with the painting. So I've done that with the pink and I'm also going to do that with the blue as well just to really make sure that moon blends in with the sky behind it and sort of fits in with the colour theme that we're going for. So rather than mixing the perfect colour, sometimes it can be easier to go in, say with a white with the highlights, and then add a glaze later to bring that tone of white down a little bit. So I just want to add a little bit more of a yellow glow above the mountains and um, so that's just my personal choice you can do whatever you feel like your painting needs at that time all our paintings will look slightly different and that's what i absolutely love about seeing your creations online like it just blows my mind how many of you upload your paintings and how amazing they look it's just incredible Okay, so there is also the option to leave it here if you're feeling stressed and you're like, right, okay, it's done, I don't want to ruin it. Um, but again, if you want just that extra bit of challenge, we can add some little birds in the sky which are going to contrast so nicely with those background vivid bright colours. So here again, you can use a reference photo to make sure that you're definitely being random Basically all that I'm doing is just recreating the shape. In fact, sometimes it can be helpful not to think about what it is you're painting, but just look at the shape and the outline. So sometimes if we think I'm drawing a bird, we can subconsciously put on the paper what our mind thinks a bird looks like. And that can be dangerous because it hardly ever actually looks like what we think it does. So if we use a reference photo, it can really help us have the shape so you can see that all these little shapes zoomed in do not really look like birds, but all together you can tell that's what they are. So I'm using Payne's Grey for this because I just really love the contrast with the, the bright yellow in the background. And an important thing to remember when you're painting is to keep on breathing because so often, especially when I'm doing details, I just hold my breath and I start feeling dizzy and I'm like, what is wrong? Oh, I have forgot to breathe. So keep taking deep breaths, keep shaking it out, shrug your shoulders, have a sip of tea just to stay fluid with it. So now I'm just looking at what I've done and then looking back at the reference photo to see if there's anything I've missed. And I feel like it just needs a little stray one at the end. <laughs> okay, so now to do the reflection, I am not going to do it so intensely as the sky because it is just a reflection. They're going to be a bit wobbly. So I'm just going to almost like create little dots or hints or suggestions. I mean, we know what they are. So this is more just to lead the eye into believing that it is really a reflection. So this you don't have to be quite so exact on. And for the final touch, you've got to make sure you sign it. So sign your name at the bottom in whatever colour you like. I'm going to go with yellow. 
and that is your painting complete. So I really, really hope from the bottom of my heart that you guys loved that tutorial. I thought it was really fun to make and it's something a little bit different for me with the whole moon and the birds. As I said, if you upload it, make sure to tag me in. I'd love to see your creations and have a beautiful creative day. Thanks guys, bye!